with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. It's a because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Hi, and welcome to The Christian View. I'm your host, Dr. Trudy, and I just want to thank you for inviting us into your home. You know, we take today's hot and challenging topics and we weigh it against the Word of God because God does have a view, and He has a view for you. Today, I have a, grid, a good friend with me. He drove all the way, um, what, three hours to be three, here? Three hours. Three hours, so thank you, um, Diego, for, for just coming and, and being a part of The Christian View today. It's a pleasure to have you. Well, I think The Christian View is worth it. Well, thank you. God has, you know, amazing things that he needs to get on the airways. And so I'm excited right. to do it. And so let's just tell them a little bit about our audience, a little bit about you. You're from Venezuela. That's right. And when did you come to the States? First of all, you know, you need to get credit. You said Venezuela pretty great. Well, thanks. Like that was accurate. <laughs> so I was born in Venezuela. Thanks. And then um, I moved to Miami when I was three years old. Right. So I was raised in Miami, Florida. Um, and two years ago, moved to Charlotte. And how do you like Charlotte? I love it. it I, think, I think it's great to experience seasons. Mm -hmm. I've never experienced seasons before. Right. I touched snow for the first time last year, and I don't think I can go back to not having fall. Right. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I think the Lord meant for us to have seasons. We have seasons in, our, in the weather. We have seasons in our life. I and agree. So, you know, it's nice to be able to be in those different seasons and to know what season we're in. Exactly. Amen. Although I'm, I'm, I'm ready kind of for winter to be over. Yes. So. I am ready for spring. I am ready for spring. But now you um, became a Christian, you told me, at age 12. Is that right? Age 15. 15, okay. Age 15, I was <clears throat> brought up in a small church of Christ. And this one man named Mike Hoots uh, broke down the book of John for me at 15 and got baptized. Well, what really spoke to you about the book of John? Do you remember way back then? <clears throat> I think it was really the humanity of Jesus. The fact that you know, he came in here and connected with people. And um, he made him much more relatable. Mm -hmm. And I was able to connect with him. Right. Which kind of goes along with what you do for a living now because you connect with people. Amen. And so you're a talent manager. That's right. And you have a lot of great talent that you manage. So let's talk about <clears throat> how you got into that. Share the name of your company. That's right. So my, my, the, company, the, the company's name is Anthem Collective Management. And... Um, I named it that because the anthem is the gospel of Jesus that we share in common mm -hmm. and a collective because my desire is that we all work together. Right. I think unity is not only the way that the Lord has called us to live, but the way that's most effective. So that got launched in 2020 and um, officially and um, been going hard ever since. Do you want to name some of your, um, your current clients? Yeah, for sure. So I'll go in the order of which they were signed. Okay. Robert Amaya, who you might know from Courageous right. Family Camp. Um, and after Robert, Haley Julia, who's a Christian influencer with over like 600,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And after her, Kaya Jones, who's a Grammy Award winning artist. And um, after Kaya, um, it's Beverly Hallway, who's a casting director. Right. And they're all amazing. All amazing. They're all amazing. I tell people I want to sign, I want to create the NBA USA team. Right. Like the best of the best. And yeah, I believe each one of them is the, the best of the best. And so when you're thinking about adding a new client, <clears throat> what, what goes into your thought process? Nothing has to do with the business. Right. Honestly, um, I just look for relationships. I say I look for relationships over representation. Mm -hmm. So I just look forward to having a relationship with someone. I've never... I've never gone looking for people. Um, I've just built relationships with people. Right. And we became friends. And from that, it, they became clients. And that's what I look for. If we can hang out, if we can chat, that's what I care about. Each one of my clients, if you were to ask me to describe them, mm -hmm. I would talk about everything else beyond the, their, their talent or what they, they do in the, in the industry. Right. We're, we're friends. And that's, I think that's how it should be. That's, that's the model, you know, that's the model of Jesus. He wants us to be in unity, like-minded, right. because we all have the same goal in mind. We should as believers, Amen. and that is to get as many people into the pearly gates as possible, into Amen. heaven as possible. I agree. You know, you talk a lot about identity and why identity is so important. Yeah. Let's talk about identity. Yeah, I believe identity is the root of everything that we do. And I believe that that's the way 
um, God has wired us to be identity driven. I believe what we do stems from who we are. Mm -hmm. So we, we can, we tend to focus on the, the fruits and not the root. And for me, it's, we got to be identity driven. And I think as believers, our identity is found in Jesus. Right. Um, not in what we do as far as I'm, I'm an actor or I'm a talent manager, I'm a host, but our identity is what influences everything we do. Right. So we can't put um, um, the, what we do before that. So I believe if we do that and truly hold on to our identity, um, it's also going to protect us from so much in life mm -hmm. when we don't get the role or right. that we wanted or that, that booking that we were hoping to get. Um, it may hurt us, mm -hmm. but it won't totally crush us because our identity isn't found in that. Right. And, and God's going to love us no matter what, Amen. no matter, Amen. no matter what we do. And if we That's can right. find our identity in our, in our, and it be rooted and grounded in him, yeah. then when that happens, we're not going to be devastated. But I'm sure you've experienced clients who've doubt. been devastated. And how do you coach them through that disappointment? You know, it's moments like that, that I don't, I don't think about coaching. I just, I just think about being there for them, being present. Um, and just being there and walking through that journey with them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, it's, I've signed somebody like Kaya Jones, who's had um, a big impact. And, um, and as, as she would be the first one to, to address, like I've done said things that maybe I weren't the, the most wise. Right. And, um, and it's being able to walk with her through that mm -hmm. and being able to, okay, like that stinks, you know, but being, being mindful of, okay, get plugged into your local church, right. get plugged into your community. I, your talent, you, what you're doing in the industry is not enough. You know, it's about being reminded to be involved in your local community, having that local church and just being there for somebody, you know, just hearing them out and letting them know that their emotions are real. Right. Absolutely. I love that. Letting them know that their emotions are real. We'll be right back more with Diego here at the Christian View. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Christian View. I'm Dr. Trudy, your host, and I have with me Diego from uh, Venezuela, from Miami to Charlotte. Charlotte, and right. thank you for driving all this way here. We're going to talk a little bit. I want to just share a little bit about your past, and how, you, and then we can talk about how you got to where you are today. But you hosted one of the largest Christian hip hop websites called Jam the Hype. Can That's we right. talk a little bit about Jam the Hype? We can. Um, Jam the Hype was an was an incredible experience that I did for several years, yeah. and. Um, um, I, when I think about that and how I got started, I just think about, you know, God's graciousness, right? Mm -hmm. And how God doesn't allow anything you've been through to go to waste. Absolutely. Um, it helps build you and develop you into who he's called you to be. Mm -hmm. And during that time of Jam the Hype and doing all these interviews, I never thought I'd be stepping into management. Right. Um, but it you, was... It, you interviewed Grammy and Dove Award winners. That's right. Yeah. Like, and so I, I enjoyed that. Right. I, just because I enjoyed people, you know, and God opened up that door. Mm -hmm. And I'm of the, the, the type that if God opens up a door, um, I'm going to step into it. And right. if, it, if it ain't for me, God's going to shut it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I'm not afraid of just trying something new. So I did that, realized I, I enjoyed it. How long did you do that? Maybe about three years. Okay. Um, and, and that was in Miami? That was everywhere. everywhere. So okay. anywhere we had events in Miami, um, Orlando, Tampa, that's um, a South by Southwest was in Austin, Texas. Okay. So it was anywhere, yeah. you know, and I, and I enjoyed it so very much for those three years and just connecting with people in the industry. Mm -hmm. So then how did you move to being a talent manager? Yeah. So in Miami, I was always involved in, in ministry and I got the opportunity to, to help plant a church in Miami. And, um, like I said, I'm, I'm all about relationships. So I'm right. always networking with people. And this one actor happened to live in Miami. His name is Robert Amaya. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> for Father's Day, we were looking for a speaker and I reached out to him and he came in. And I mean, this is, this is God, right? Where I thought I was just connecting with him to speak at the, at the church right. for that event. But God had so much more planned. Doesn't it was, he always? And it's amazing yeah. because that's why I tell people all the time, how'd you do this? I'm not smart enough. Like it's God. Like I can't plan this. Right. We tend to put God in a box. And God's I'm telling like, you. hey, let's, you know, let's get rid of the box. Yeah. yeah. And Robert and I just ended up becoming friends and from friends became brothers. And he was just in a, in a, in a point in his career. Where he was just, he was just needing a friend and needing someone to help, right. you know, just be available. And mm -hmm. to me, I'm like, oh yeah, I think maybe you should try this out, try this out. And Robert was the one that reached out to me one day in the office and he was saying, you know, I just really appreciate our relationship. Right. Would you consider coming in as my manager? And I never read of how to be booked and to be a manager. Right. Um, 
and, I, and I'm glad I didn't, you know, because during that time, my idea of management was simply just being a friend. Mm -hmm. And that's what got me started. Right. And from there, it just, it just kept, it kept, it just kept building. It, it kept building. And again, not of, of my doing, right. but it's just by me showing up, mm -hmm. you know, just being available and being willing. Right. You have no idea where that, where that can lead. Everything else that I, I mentioned in my, in, in my career, they were for seasons, yes. you know, but if you have no idea, if you just show up, you know, God has something, something there for you. I love that. And maybe surrender. Mm -hmm. Surrender your agenda, what you think your life is going to look amen. like. Surrender so that God can take it and create a masterpiece out of it. Oh, amen. If you would ask me at 15 years old or like when I was a teenager, what I would do, I thought, you know, my passions were music and, 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 and rapping. And in Miami, I won first place in this freestyle battle competition. I'm like, oh, this is what I'm going to right. do. And how small of a dream that mm -hmm. was, you know, like... God was like, I'm going, I'm going to take this experience that you have, but I have something else planned out for right. you. And I'm so glad he did because mm -hmm. I don't have that desire anymore. Right. Dreaming big. Dreaming big and showing up. Right. I think showing up is half the battle because the enemy gets in our head going back to identity. Amen. Well, who do you think you are thinking that you can be someone else's talent manager? Or who do you think you are, you know, going in and speaking to thousands of people? But that yeah. half the battle is showing up. It's just showing up and being faithful with the little. Right. You know, some of us, we want, I want, I want all of this. I want all these clients. I want, I want, I want, but why would God bless me with 10 if I can't be faithful with the one, Amen. you know, if I can't honor him with the one that I'm working with. And I was with Robert for like, now it's been five years total, but before bringing anyone in, I was with just with him for like three years, two or three years, not seeking anything out, mm -hmm. but just honoring that, right. you know, and wanting to be faithful to what God has put in front of me. And, um, a couple years later, God did something else. You know, that's a valuable lesson I think most of we can all glean from is to be content where you are. Yeah. Because sometimes we go chasing after that next shiny thing or the next big thing. And the Lord yeah. is saying, I need you to be content yeah. with what I have you doing. Amen. And put 110% into that so that, yes, I can trust you to yeah. give you more. But so often it's the enemy, you know, shining that little object at us saying, okay, yeah. but you need to go here. You need to go here. And I'm speaking to myself Amen. as well, because we tend to chase instead of being content. Amen. And in the word of God, it says anyone that puts his hand to the plow and looks around is unfit for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I don't want to look around. I, I just want to be faithful with what God's got for me. Amen. You know? Amen. I think that is so, that is so true. I say something like, I say, you need to stay in your lane. Trudy, right. Trudy, just stay in your lane. Yeah. You know, because as a runner, if you look to the right or to the left, yeah. you're going to trip up. That's and right. if you're in a race and you look to the right or to the left when you're running, you're going to lose momentum. Yeah. And so it's so important yeah. to stay looking ahead Amen. in our lane with what God has us. Has I us agree. Do. I agree. And you, and you have no idea what God will do with that. Right. You with know? a surrendered heart. Yeah. And trusting in him. Yeah. Like to me, it's just trusting in him. If I'm, if I'm so focused that God, what I, I want, I want this to be here. I just feel like that's a distraction. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great to have goals, but if we have no systems in place, like People don't run out of goals. People, run, people don't, don't reach their goals because there's not systems in place. They're not honoring God with what they have in place. So to me, it's like, I just want to maximize what God has for me mm -hmm. here. And if God leads me somewhere else, great. But I, I want to be faithful with this. Right. Faithful in the small. And then he will, if he wants, he'll, That's right. he'll move you to bigger. Amen. But we've got to trust him that his timing Amen. is always perfect. Nothing catches him by surprise. And he's right. working all things out for our good and his glory. Yep. And that's a beautiful place to rest. We'll be right back with a little bit more here on The Christian View. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Christian View. We're talking today with Diego, and we've, we've had a, a great discussion so far. You know, we've talked about you working with hip hop, um, jam, the hype, and we've mm -hmm. talked about just the identity. We've talked a little bit about some of your clients. So I want to just share a little bit more about some of your other clients. So your first client was Robert Amea. That's right. He, he's an amazing actor. Love his, love his movies. Um, yeah. And then you signed on Haley Julia. That's right. So let's talk a little bit about her and how that came about. Yeah, so Haley Julia. Julia, she, um, she has such an interesting start, you know, when they see her following. So on, on TikTok, she has over 600,000. On Instagram, she has over 100,000. And people look at that like, oh, that must have been years and years in the making. And the beautiful thing is during the pandemic in 2020, um, she's like, hey, I'm bored. Um, let me open a TikTok. 
And she's like, I want to use the two things um, that kind of describe me on my videos. And um, it was Jesus and then being goofy. Mm -hmm. And she's, she is a goofball. She is a trip and a half. Um, she started making these, these Christian videos and adding humor and to it. And they're really funny. And yeah, they and they're really great funny. quality. Yeah, they are. And that blew up, mm -hmm. you know, TikTok, you know, it just, it just developed a huge following and um, got connected with her from another influencer friend. Okay. And um, yeah, we just started uh, creating this relationship and hearing each other, like get, getting to know who she was, her, her walk with the Lord mm -hmm. and, um, and what her passion is and what her goals are. And that ended up becoming a client. Right. And then you went on to, is it, is um, Holloway, Beverly Holloway. So be right mm -hmm. before Bev with, was Kaya. Okay. And how I got connected with, with Kaya was with Haley. Kaya knew Haley and she was reaching out to Haley for some type of production. And we started talking and then Kaya just started ex expressing her, her needs and where mm -hmm. she's at in her career. And um, so we'd spend the next couple of months just building a relationship her meeting my, my wife and you know, every one of my clients, it's gotta be an okay with God. The Holy Spirit's gotta give me this peace and clarity right. and it's gotta be okay with my wife. If my wife gives me the green light, then they move, then we mm -hmm. move forward. But if she doesn't give me the green light, then it's not happening. Right. You know, because I, I don't, I don't want to sacrifice my marriage for the sake of success in, 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 in my business. So very um, wise. So she, when she gives me the green light, she met with Kaya. We, we had a great conversation and that stemmed from, from Haley Julia and started working with Kaya. Mm -hmm. And now you're getting ready to sign a new person. That's right. So let's talk about that. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, I, it, I think it's really exciting. Yeah. Um, and the way that I got connected with this new person was through Kaya. Okay. Um, and that's this person was reaching out to Kaya for a booking. And um, we started, um, we, we, when we were talking about the, the conference booking Kaya, I'm like, hey, can we just pray about the conference? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think in this, the, this Christian industry, the weird thing is how shocking it is for a manager to want to pray. Right. You know, with the booking for Robert, I spoke with the producer, and before we got off the phone, because he's wanting Robert, I'm like, can we just pray about it first? Absolutely. And he was just like in shock, mm -hmm. you know? And so I prayed with her about the conference, and that turned into a, a relationship. Um, got to talk to her husband. So, so officially, you know, my newest client, her name is um, Kelly Masters, and she is an, a sports agent primarily the NFL mm -hmm. and baseball. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Sold out for the Lord. Amen, that is great. So in this industry, mm -hmm. what are some of the, the hindrances or pitfalls that you see? Wow, I don't think we have time for that, but <laughs> um, some of the challenges I see, I think number one, I feel like the Christian industry can be very unshepherded. Right. And a lot of the um, social media is great, but sometimes a lot of these people get a lot of clout and clout doesn't necessarily um, reflect the calling. Mm -hmm. um, you just got a lot of followers and sometimes we, we misinterpret that as, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. Um, so there's a lot of people that have this great big following, but they're not involved in their local church. Mm -hmm. They're not involved in discipleship. Right. Um, so, you know, Tim Keller says anything good, we, we turn anything good into an idol and anything that that becomes better, better than, bigger than God is an idol. Right. And I think we can turn social media, our careers, auditions, songs into an idol. And when it goes unchecked mm -hmm. without discipleship or community or pastoral support, it becomes an idol. Right. So I think that's the number one thing for me. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, you can see it. It's, you know, if someone doesn't like your post. Does it, right. does it send you down, you know, the road of mm. discouragement, you know, so we, we have to, we have to check ourselves yeah. on a, I think a daily basis, you know, put down the for phone, sure. put down social media. It's good for a purpose yeah. and it's good for a season, but yeah. sometimes we've got to learn to, to step away from it. Yeah. Because that, that comparison trap can be pretty detrimental. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And that's why I think it's great how the Lord never calls us to seek happiness, mm -hmm. but he calls us to seek joy. Right. And, you know, happiness is just based on what's happening. But, but joy is despite your circumstance, despite your social media following or auditions, um, you're able to have joy because it's not rooted in those things. Right. right. It's rooted in who Christ is and who Christ says you are. Mm -hmm. you know? And that goes back to the identity, to truly That's know right. who you are, then those things aren't going to matter. Mm -hmm. Right. We may get a little discouraged, we may get a little tripped up, but it's not going to 
um, destroy us That's or it's right. not going to send us down a spiral dark path. That's right. You know, because we know who we are in Christ. Amen. Amen. And I think that's the trap of the enemy that yeah. he can just, he can throw at us. Yeah, we just, and that's why we, we do need a community. Mm-hmm. It's easy to become an island on social media or in the industry. And I think it's a very dangerous place to be in. Right. You know, you used to work in church ministry. That's right. Are you still doing any church ministry or? I don't, you know, people would, would they ask me then. I don't think I ever stopped. Okay. And I don't ever want to not have that mindset, like what I believe what I do with, with my clients and my company, it's a level of ministry involved in that right. because there's a level of accountability and discipleship that, that, we, that we do together. But officially, like on staff of a church, no, I'm not, um, but I'm involved in my local church. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm very passionate about that. each one of my clients has to be involved in a local church. Right. Um, I'm not your pastor, I'm not, I'm not any of that, you need that locally. Somewhere where they're not using you for the sake of your gifts, right. but simply somewhere you're able to receive correction, you're able to grow, um, that's, that's what they need. Somewhere beyond the camera. Right, absolutely. So we have about a minute left. If someone's trying to get into the industry, what would you, what would you suggest? What advice would you give? I would say don't step into it um, without being fully grounded in to who you are mm-hmm. in Christ or understanding what the gospel is. Right. Don't enter it alone. I think that for anyone that wants to get in, a simple reminder that they need to be, and this is for anyone, but anyone wanting to get into an industry, is be, re- be reminded of the gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ, lived the life we should have lived in our place, died the death we should have died. Three days later, he resurrected, Amen. offered to give the salvation to all who believe, repent and trust in his name. So anyone that wants to get involved in that, have that tattooed in your heart, Amen. in your head, Um, because that's the only thing that matters. Amen. Amen. I totally agree with you. We'll be right back with a little bit more here on The Christian View. Don't go away. Hi, welcome back to The Christian View. We've had a great discussion with Diego. Thank you so much for being here today. You are very welcome. It's It's been a pleasure. Make sure you're following Diego on all social media outlets. He is amazing, doing amazing things for the kingdom. And thanks again for tuning in to The Christian View. Remember that God loves you. He sees you. He has amazing things in store for you. So stay connected to him. Stay in a Bible-believing church. And we'll see you next time here on The Christian View. Take care. Bye-bye. So good.